السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيدنا وسندنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وغرياته وأهل بيته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد الحمد لله we have reached uh, the end of the ninth uh, fast day today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has taken us through uh, what is, mashallah, majority of the first 10 days of Ramadan. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, seal uh, these Mubarak days, inshallah, with khair and with goodness. This uh, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described this Ramadan as having three parts. This is how the shahrun awaluhu rahmah. According to the hadith uh, uh, narrated through uh, Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu that this is such a month, the first part of it is mercy and the second part of it is forgiveness and the third part of it is manumission from the hellfire. So, uh, you know, my, uh, my advice to myself and to everybody else is that every uh, moment the Lord wants from us something and we should be doing in that time the thing that he asks of us and the thing that he facilitates for us. So mercy is something we all need. We all need mercy uh, in every moment of our lives, whether it's children who need to look up to their parents uh, for mercy or parents who in their old age need to look to their children for mercy or whether it is the mercy that's there in every sip of water and date uh, that we break our fast with, or the mercy of the sick people who receive shifa from Allah Ta'ala, who are healed and cured by Allah's leave, uh, or any uh, other type of mercies. Allah Ta'ala says about himself, that he fixed as a commandment for himself, or as a rule for himself, mercy. And he describes himself as a Rahman and Rahim. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, he is the one who is the inner bit possessed of mercy, such a mercy that touches everybody, um, uh, such a wide mercy that it touches everyone, and such a deep mercy that those people who take his friendship in wilaya, Allah Ta'ala will give them a maqam for ever and ever in Jannah. So ask for this mercy in these days. And these days are almost over. Uh, uh, the you know Tonight's going to be the last night uh, from the first 10. So uh, keep asking Allah for mercy. These are the days that we gather and then we'll eat and drink from the mercies of uh, this Mubarak night, inshallah, for the rest of the month and the rest of the year and the rest of our lives and in the next life as well. So a very simple dua that you can ask uh, uh, because you can ask in any language and every language Allah Ta'ala uh, understands and answers. Um, but the words of the Quran have their own grace and their own barakah in them. And there's no better way to ask Allah Ta'ala than the way, the way that he instructed us. So he commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by extension the entire Ummah, وَقُلْ and say, رَبِّ غْفِرْ وَارْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ رَبِّ غْفِرْ وَارْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ رَبِّ الرَّاحِمِينَ Say, O oh my Lord, forgive and have mercy and you're the best of those who ever had mercy. Just repeat it a couple of times with me, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala answer your prayers and answer ours. Whoever says Amin, may the entire uh, whoever is listening Allah accept it on behalf of everybody. Rabbighfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. Rabbighfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. Rabbighfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. It combines maghfirah, forgiveness, and mercy, uh, which will tie us into the next, inshallah, 10. Uh, 10 days of Ramadan nicely. So we continue our uh, Heroes of Islam series uh, uh, speaking about a very uh, important person uh, and a very uh, uh, per person of very high rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person that there's a lot to learn from. He's such an important person that he's the person who is most frequently mentioned by name from the Prophets alayhim salatu wasalam in the Quran. And that is Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is the next of the major prophets uh, that are mentioned in the Quran uh, of the Banu Israel after uh, after uh, after Sayyidina uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is uh, um, born in Egypt. You'll remember that after Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam's parents, Sayyidina Yaqub and uh, Sayyidina uh, Yaqub and uh, the mother, uh, 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 Rahil, the mother of Sayyidina Yusuf salam, and the other 11 stars, meaning his brothers, they came and they uh, paid homage and tribute to him in Egypt and he brought them to Egypt. Uh, several generations had passed 
And the historians, they say that, uh, like we had mentioned in the story of Sayyidina Yusuf, Yusuf alayhi salam, that the, the Hyksos, uh, a Semitic speaking people who had ruled Egypt uh, during the, the time of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, they were deposed and overthrown by the Egyptians again. So the Egyptians didn't really take well to uh, uh, the fact that they were occupied by foreigners. And uh, they felt that Banu Israel were a sign of the foreign occupation in the sense that Sayyidina Yusuf Islam was a functionary and a revered functionary, uh, high ranking dignitary of the Hyksos court. And, and so the Egyptians, when they reasserted their native uh, Hamitic speaking rule, um, basically will uh, um, subjugate and marginalize the Banu Israel. Um, and this happens, this is, ha this is something that happens to Muslims as well. If you look at China, for example, from the time, uh, from the advent of Islam, uh, the uh, Muslims have been a very vibrant and important part of uh, life uh, amongst the Chinese dynasties until the last native Chinese dynasties overthrown the Ming dynasty. And when the Manchurians take over, um, because they're the historic enemies of the Mongols uh, and the Turks, uh, they associate Islam with 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 their old enemies, and so they'll mar marginalize them. They'll dispossess them of their land grants and of their high positions in government, and they'll marginalize them. And then when the communists uh, take over, communists are against religion. So uh, you know the religion of Allah Taala is going to be the number one that makes the to do list. And so Muslims in China have been marginalized, and that's a process that's ongoing to this day. May Allah Ta'ala give relief to our brothers and sisters, not just the Uyghurs who are going through it especially tough right now, but also the Han Chinese speaking Hui people who whose massages are being shut down and who are being banned from fasting and from congregating as well um, in, in their own lands. Even though they're Chinese speaking people, the Ningxia prefecture is a majority Muslim state in, uh, in China. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the Muslims are in a bad situation over there as well. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to give them help and we help them whatever way we're able to. So just like that, uh, uh, the pharaoh, and now the word pharaoh is used uh, to describe the king of Egypt, um, the pharaoh uh, will marginalize the Banu Israel and he sees uh, in amongst the oppression and suppression he's doing of these people, uh, it, it's augured uh, and foretold that one of their children is going to end up uh, overthrowing uh, his rule and is going to be his demise. So he orders that their uh, their first their their sons in that particular year all of them be killed, and that their daughters be let to live. Now, one of the reasons that the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is so powerful, and it is told in the Quran uh, again and again, it's told several times with a, a, a quite a bit of detail, uh, exploring different aspects and different angles of the story, is it is the archetypal struggle of the uh, oppressed against their oppressors. And Allah Ta'ala says, He begins in Surah Al-Qasas, uh, 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 Indeed, Pharaoh, who is, I mean, he is himself Pharaoh, but he's also the archetype of the oppressor. Indeed, Pharaoh exalted himself in the earth and he divided the people into different, into different categories and different camps. And uh, he uh, uh, marginalized one of them. He basically played them off against each other and then he'll marginalize one of them, which is something uh, I think like anyone who knows anything about American history right now can chime in with <laughs> really a lot, of, a lot of parallels and a lot of mirrors that we see also in our own society um, between the struggles between uh, uh, the, the, the enslaved populations of Africans um, and the uh, the enslaving population, the struggles between the Native Americans who lived in this land uh, and uh, uh, those who then colonize it afterward, uh, in many cases by force, uh, and in some cases not, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, they'll see parallels in the, uh, you know, struggles that different types of minorities uh, face. They'll see struggles in, you know, in, in the weird scapegoating that people do for a number of minorities, including Muslims. Muslims is not an ethnic minority, but it is a religious minority. And so you see, like, all of a sudden, just like two months ago, if, a, you know, a woman has a niqab on, 
it's a security threat to a lot of people and they'll make a big fuss about it. And now the same, uh, you know, thing that's a security th threat, you see everybody in the airport is rolling around with their face covered to the point where they're not even going to let you get on the plane without your face covered. Um, those countries in... <laughs> You got to have a sense of humor about all of it. Those countries in Europe that made it a crime and made it a civil infraction to wear a niqab in public and were writing tickets and, and threatening jail sentences for the women who weren't wore niqab, who kept their modesty and their decency uh, and wore niqab in public. Those same countries, mashallah, are now giving criminal fines and uh, 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 punishments uh, to those people who don't have their faces covered. Where did the security go? I mean, we all knew it was it was drama. We all knew it was security drama. I mean, like, as Muslims, we live here, we're Americans, uh, and we have as much concern about the safety and security of our people in our country as anybody else does, if not more. But we were scapegoated. It's true. Anyone who claims it's not is just engaging in sophistry. So that's a that's a thing. Is it was it's gonna happen until Yom Qiyamah so many different times. So in the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Allah Ta'ala gives an archetype that. How are we going to deal with this when it happens? This is how this thing is going to go down. So Allah Ta'ala says in the Fir'aun, Ala fil ardi wa ja'ala ahlaha shi'a yastad'ifu ta'ifatan minhum. He made them into different groups and parties uh, uh, and he played them off against one another. Uh, and uh, he marginalized one of them. And the one who's most marginalized out of all of them is who? Uh, uh, the Banu Israel, the children of Israel, who they essentially kept in slavehood in Egypt. In Egypt. Uh, and uh, 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 you know that he he would he basically commanded and ordered that their sons be killed they be slaughtered and that their uh, um, women be uh, allowed to live which is also which is also a uh, unfortunately a, a a genocidal tactic that's been used and is being used to this day um some of the stories are too horrible to mention, uh, but they should be mentioned so that people can know what's going on. Every time you buy something made in China, every time you buy, every time you buy something, uh, uh, you know that that uh, you know is supporting that 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 infrastructure. Know what you're buying into, you know, uh, which is what, which is that even in China right now, you see that the in Turkestan they have a what they call a live-in host program. Other billah, it's a euphemism basically. While the husbands and the men of the house are are arrested and in jail and the women are and the children are crying for them uh um they basically force uh, ethnic han chinese men from 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 the eastern part of china uh, many of whom actually volunteer in fact all of whom volunteer for this it's not even that they're also victims of the same system they're buy-in they bought in they drank the kool-aid of the communist party and they bought into this uh into this whole uh, scam and they basically are told uh, um, that you have to have these male hosts live in the house with you. You have to cook for them. You have to feed them. You have to host them. And you have to sleep in the same bed with them. Anyone who has any common sense knows exactly what this, this is. This is genocide. It's trying to breed out a population by force. And why is one of the reasons that they, you know, they have so many people eager to do something that's just such a sleazy and slimy thing to do, just a disgusting thing to do, is what is because of their one child policy, uh, everybody aborted their female uh, fetuses, so they have this massive imbalance of men, uh, 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 you know, with uh, regards to women proportionally. So they don't have wives from their own people that they can marry. And so you see how one evil uh, uh, will cascade down to so many more. And so this is the same thing, uh, you know, Pharaoh did the exact same thing. And the Uyghurs are unfortunately not the only people who ever uh, went through this. This is something that people have, you know, oppressed people throughout the centuries have been dealing with. And so he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they, they killed the, the male children and they uh, let the female children live. And this is again in the particular story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, a reference to the uh, 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 their priests foretelling that uh, one of the uh, children of the uh, Banu Israel will be responsible for the demise of the, the Pharaoh. And so what ends up happening is that they, uh, uh, you know, th this order is promulgated for killing the, uh, the male children. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam's mother is pregnant and ready to deliver a child. And uh, in her fear, because she knows if it's found out that she delivered her child, uh, that they will kill him. They will kill him. Um, and so she puts him in a basket.
she puts the baby uh, in a reed basket uh, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the Nile and just floats him down. And uh, you know, this is this is a consolation for anyone who's ever had to go through something difficult like this, or had to do something difficult like this by their own hand, or watch some destruction or loss that they uh, that they, you know, that no one should have to ever go through. Which is what be calm and be uh, take consolation from the fact that this is the hukum of Allah Taala. This is the ruling of Allah Taala, and that Allah Taala uh, uh, does everything He does for the best. And it is not, you know, if he wants to, he'll save us from the difficulties and the tribulations that we go through, but they are for our own good. And the day that uh, saving us is for our own good, watch the miraculous means through which he will save uh, people. Watch. Uh, he's, he, the miraculous means through which he can save somebody. If he lets somebody pass to the next world or go through some difficulty, know that that difficulty and that passing is for your own good. It's for your own good. And when it's not, Allah Ta'ala will save a person in a way that will astonish the entire mankind and the entire creation. So she puts her, her uh, uh, baby in a, a reed basket and floats him down the Nile. Now, the name Musa itself, what does it mean? Musa, it's, uh, uh, you know, in the Riwayat Warsh, it's Musa. Musa means what? Mu means in, in Coptic, it means Coptic in the uh, ancient Egyptian, it means water. Just like Mags, uh, Coptic is a Hamitic language. Hamitic language is distantly related to Semitic languages. So the language of the, the Tuareg speak and that the Berbers speak and that the ancient Egyptians spoke um, uh, 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 and uh, that are spoken in parts of the Horn of Africa like Somalian and things like that. They're all genetically related to one another. So mu, just like ma, means water in uh, uh, in uh, in Arabic, al-ma. And uh, 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 in some dialects, we'll actually say muy or moya. Uh, 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 mu means water and sa means pap papyrus reed. Um, and this is something that was mentioned by our own Mufassirin, and it's essentially correct. It's, it's essentially correct. I actually, we actually, uh, in uh, NELC, in the Near Eastern Languages Department in the University of Washington, we actually went and uh, inquired uh, with the, uh, um, exp you know, uh, the professor of ancient Egypt, uh, um, which is like itself a very fascinating, complete, like, universe of study. Uh, it's a complete academic discipline unto itself. So is this correct? Because uh, mentioned in the books of Tafsir, and he said, "Yeah, it's essentially correct." So that baby was <laughs> floated in a reed basket and put into the water, so much so that the name Musa actually just means water, water reed, water basket. Um, and he floats down the river, and he's a handsome child. He's a beautiful child. This is one of the things Allah Taala. He made everything, everyone he makes is beautiful uh, for the person of insight. But the Prophet Sallallahu you know, their beauty is is there for everyone to see. And so, uh, 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 you know, they pick up, they pick up the child, the, the Pharaoh, the house of Pharaoh picks up the child from the basket and uh, says, what a, you know, what an interesting, like, boy, where did we find him from? How, how interesting and how sweet this child looks. Asa and Yanfa'ana, maybe he, <laughs> he'll benefit us one day or natakhiduhu waladan, or we can like, you know, adopt him as a son. And, uh, um, you know, they take him in. And Allah Ta'ala mentions, he, you know, he mentions, and the story of Sayyidina Musa is told again and again. In fact, there are like two stories, the majority, two surahs at least, that the, the, the entire theme of the surah is just talking, telling the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Surah Al-Qasas and Surah Taha, uh, two of the most lyrically beautiful uh, uh, in terms of their style and the most impactful in terms of their storytelling. If Sayyidina Yusuf has one surah about him, uh, uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam actually has, at least I can think of off the top of my head, at least two two surahs that are like, um, the majority of the, the content is about him, as well as a number of other surahs in which he's mentioned uh, se you know, several times. Um, that, 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 and they take the, they pick up the baby and they say, okay, we'll keep keep the baby as our own. So, okay, alhamdulillah, you know, crisis averted, baby is saved, right? How nice. Everybody likes the baby. Uh, and But still, what happens is that uh, the, the mother of Sayyidina Musa, her heart is, is, is like ripping into a thousand pieces. What happened to my baby? How could I float my baby down the river? Well, the answer to that is they were going to kill him anyway, but still that's very little comfort to a woman who just like lost her, her child. 
And, and Allah Ta'ala says that she was about to spill the beans and like, you know, say, oh, like, let's look for the baby. If she had told everybody what she did with the baby, once they would have found him, they would have killed him. Uh, and so Allah Ta'ala says that we made firm her heart. Uh, we made firm her heart that she's just a little patient, a little bit longer. She didn't let her em emotions uh, over uh, overwhelm her. But instead, she told her sister, uh, um, uh, uh, told her Musa alayhi salam's sister to go and follow him. And what's the, the name of Musa alayhi salam's sister? It's Maryam, just like Maryam, uh, the mother of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Uh, uh, and like, mashallah, what seems to be like a quarter of the daughters of this Umar are named Maryam. And it's a nice name, mashallah. And so his his sister, imagine this kid, you know, uh, uh, you know, her, you know, baby Musa alayhi salam's big sister, Maryam. She so she goes, she sends him, she goes, Go, go and uh, 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 go and like follow, you know, follow the river and see like if you can't like kind of like DL, go see what happened to the baby, you know. And so she realizes, oh man, this kid just went into the into the royal palace of Pharaoh, and so she's just hanging out like seeing what's going on, kind of scoping out the scene. And Allah Taala says, wa haramna alayhi al that we made haram for him to drink, to suckle. Uh, uh, the milk uh, uh, and nurse from any uh, any of the women of the palace, and so the baby is getting sick and like is, you know, raising a fuss, and they like like the baby, and so they want to keep it, and so they're like, oh, what do we do? You know, how are we going to feed this baby? This baby is going to die if he doesn't drink anything, and then that's when a uh, 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 big sister comes in handy, right? So if there are any, any big sisters at home, I know there are a couple of people who told me that they tune in with their family. So if there's any big sisters at home, this is what kind of big sister you need to be. Okay, so don't be bossy. Uh, with your little siblings and don't be mean and don't be uh, you know don't act like a dinosaur with them but take care of them take care of them and Allah will be happy with you and then your little siblings will love you and respect you too because that's what a big sister is supposed to do so she goes she goes she goes and they said like oh, look uh, I know I know a family the mother uh, which is really good with kids and they would take really good care of this baby and the baby would definitely drink drink the milk from, from from this mother and the family will like be real good like they'll they'll raise the kid real good and they're like yeah sure and so she, she goes and brings her mother and both of them are very tight-lipped you know because obviously they don't want uh, uh you know they don't want the baby uh, you know the baby to be put in danger uh, and so mashallah allah ta'ala on the pay of Fir'aun, their enemy uh, uh he reunites the mother with the baby not only saves the baby's life, but reunites the mother with the baby, and the baby uh, uh, suckles with the mother and has that bond, and they have that time with one another to the point where the mother knows that okay, my son is gonna live and he's, he's gonna be okay, and uh, you know it's something she would have had to do anyway, and she would have done anyway happily, but it's now all done on the on the dime of Pharaoh, which is which is you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when He wants to give He gives that's what that's what we refer to as the fadl of Allah, yutihi man yasha. Uh, and so the Mufassirun, they tell a story about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam when he's growing up, that he is he is a, a very strong child. I mean, he's like physically built well, and he's very strong, and he's very brave. He's not afraid of anything, uh, so much so that like they kind of have some trouble with him. So one of the things that he does, it's something that, that's uh, known that later on, um, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, when Allah Ta'ala chooses him to carry uh, his commandments and carry his Torah, which is... You know, in terms of revelation, the greatest honor any of the prophets alayhim salam ever was given uh, after the uh, after the receiving of the Quran. And the Quran itself is the book of Allah Taala and uh, the the cornerstone of civilization and of faith in this world until the Yom Qiyamah, until the Day of Judgment. And before that, the Torah yahkumu bihin nabi yuna that the 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 Torah was such a a, a scripture. That not just one, but 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 generations of prophets and learned scholars and rabbis and oliya saints of, of of the Lord uh, would would live their life according to its teachings and would reach a station with Allah Taala according to its teachings and would judge and establish just justice with one another according to its teachings. Um, this is a great honor. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose him when he chose him to you know stafetuka the risalati wa bi kalami that I chose you to carry my messages and to carry my divine speech. Uh, um, he complains to Allah Taala. He says, "I can't you know, I can't speak. I can't speak properly. I have a speech impediment, and the speech impediment was not something congenital that he was born with." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
Rather, the Mufassirun write that when he was a kid, because of his bravery and because of his strength, he once picked up a hot coal out of the fire and it looked really neat to him, you know, as a little kid. And he uh, put it on his tongue and it burned his tongue. Uh, and because of that, it, uh, uh, it slurred his speech somewhat. Otherwise, none of the prophets are born with any congenital, uh, uh, any congenital uh, uh, defects. But uh, it, it, the injury, he, he sustained the injury, just like our Prophet وسلم, sustained the injuries, like he had one of his adras, his uh, molar teeth, uh, 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 knocked out because the link from the, the, the chain mail of his helmet uh, went into his cheek during the Battle of Uhud. Um, and just like Anbiya alayhi Salam, they get sick, uh, you know, like other people do. Um, so this was a this was an issue he had, and so uh, uh, you know, but like it tells you also something about about his physical constitution that he was he was he was big and he was tough, he was strong, he was not uh, uh, he was not someone to be messed with, uh, and so what happens is he's basically treated like a royal prince of the of, of the palace, and uh, everything's all good. Until uh, one day when he leaves the palace, uh, um, a problem happens. And what is that problem? That problem is that he sees uh, two people fighting with one another. And uh, um, one of them is from Banu Israel and one of them is from, uh, from the Egyptians. And he takes the side of the person from Banu Israel. And uh, uh, basically he intervenes between the two of them. And uh, uh, he, what does he, what he do, he does, he intervenes between the two of them. And then the Egyptian tries to like, you know, uh, struggle with him. So Sayyidina Musa stri strikes him so hard that uh, he strikes him uh, unintentionally a death blow and that person just dies. And um, what was Sayyidina Musa salam, trying to do? He was trying to establish justice between the two of them. But people kind of put two and two together and they see him, they look, they see what he looks like, what his physical constitution is like. And they say, well, you're just one of them. And uh, that's why you pick their side. And, uh, you know, basically they, they uh, invoke the machinery of the state uh, in order to fight against him. That look, the Banu Israel people are rebelling and he's taking their side. And so what ends up happening is a person comes and, and, and taunts him. Uh, he says that that look at you, Musa. You know you're just like now starting to start cause chaos and mischief in the earth, and we're gonna you know wal mala bika that the, the the government is right now preparing uh, how they're gonna take care of you, and uh, a, a man comes to say the Musa alayhi salam and says look you know things are kind of getting heavy right now, things are getting kind of difficult right now. You gotta get out of here, otherwise it's not gonna. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be good. You know, something bad is gonna happen to you. And so all of a sudden, now he loses his privilege that he was uh, living in, and he has to flee for his life. He has to flee for for his life. So he flees, and uh, uh, that's when he takes to uh, he takes essentially to the desert. He leaves the city, and uh, he makes a very beautiful du'a to Allah Taala. He says, uh, "Rabbi." Inni lima anzaltu ilayya min khairin faqir. He says, Oh my Lord, I am I am in dire need and I am in dire poverty of any good that you send uh, to me. And this is a beautiful dua. It's from the duas of the prophets and it's from the duas of the, the Quran itself. Uh, and so we should we should learn these duas and we should say them ourselves and receive the benefit and the barakah, the blessings from them. So Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqir. So, oh my Lord, I'm in dire need of any good that you can send to me right now. Of any good that you can send to me right now. All of us have been in, in that situation. You know, can't catch a clean break. Uh, life is just really difficult. Can't catch a break from any side. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqir. Oh my Lord, indeed, I am uh, I am in, in dire need of any any good that you can send me. And so what ends up happening? Allah Ta'ala sends him a lot of good, mashallah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala will uh, send him a lot of good. And that good comes from the goodness of Sayyidina Musa Alayhi So he comes across a, a place in the Badia in the, in the open desert where there's a well. And he sees that all of the shepherds, their flocks are drinking uh, water from that well. And then he sees somewhat to the side 
that there are two uh, two girls who have their uh, um, their flocks, uh, you know, on the side, and uh, uh, you know, he asks them. He's like, "What's the deal with you? What's the deal with you, ladies? Like, how come you're not, uh, uh, um, um, you know, you're not your flocks are not drinking uh, right now with uh, other flocks." They say that, uh, uh, you know, we have to water our flocks and our father is like an extremely aged man. And uh, uh, we wait till the men are gone and, and that they've, they've uh, um, given their, their water, uh, given their uh, uh, flocks water to drink. And uh, then we, then we will, um, then we, then we will take our flocks to drink water as well, which is a sign of their haya. It's a sign of their 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 uh, um, bashfulness and their shyness and their their like the opposite of being like uh, shameless. You know that they're people of propriety and honor. And to say the Musa is like, well, if that's the case, you know, I'm not doing anything anyway. I gotta, you know, I have some time on my hands. This will be my good deed of the day. And he just takes their flocks and he goes and he. Uh, he gives them he gives them water, and then he returns the flocks to these girls, and then he 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 makes this dua that we mentioned. And so what happens is that like after some time, the the one of the girls finds him, and says, "My father wishes to call you and wishes to meet you, and he wishes to pay you, uh, uh, compensate you for the work that you did for him in watering our flocks." And uh, uh, um. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, in his innocence and in his beauty and in his purity, he says, okay. And so what does he do? He, he you know, he has to follow her uh, because she's the one who knows where they're going. Uh, he doesn't know where they're going, but he doesn't want, he doesn't want to, you know, like, I guess, take advantage of the fact that he's with her by like, just like, you know, ogling her or looking at her excessively. He wants her to also be able to keep her haya. And so what he does, the Mufassirun right, is that he, he says, how about this? Point me in the direction that we're supposed to walk and just pick up a couple of pebbles. And if we have to turn or if I'm going the wrong direction, just throw the pebble in the direction that I need to walk and I'll walk. That way you can walk behind me. And uh, that, way, uh, um, that way you can walk behind me. And so that like you keep your propriety and you keep your, your uh, dignity and you keep your haya. And... Uh, um, that way we can find out where we're going. And would you look at that? You know, like, you know, someone's like, well, <laughs> nowadays the, the players of the game, you know, they say, well, if you're, if you behave like that, you'll never get married. You'll never get hooked up. You'll never find a girl. You'll never find a guy. Well, the fact of the matter is you will. Uh, it's just that, you know, different types of girls are looking for different types of guys and different types of guys are looking for different types of girls. You'll find the one that's worth finding. And if you keep your hayat, you'll find someone who wants hayat. And if you lose your hayat, you'll find someone who himself has no hayat. And you'll learn the, the benefit of hayat and the, the, uh, 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 the blessings of hayat, not by uh, experiencing them, but by experiencing their loss in your, um, in your, uh, in your family and in your, in your spouse, which is very unfortunate and is very painful when it does happen. Allah Ta'ala protect all of us and protect our hayat. Allahumma kfina bi halalika an haramika wa aghnina bi fadlika amman siwak. And so at any rate, uh, what ends up happening is she then in this way leads him to the house. And uh, 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 the, uh, the, he, when he meets the father of the girls, um, he, the father asks, uh, like, who, you know, who are you? What's your story? Tell me about all of this. And who is the father? The father is one of the prophets that we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, which is who? It's Shuaib. Shuaib is uh, 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 one of the one of the people of the Qom of Midian. M Midian is one of the sons of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then his his children, his progeny, they become a Qom, and they their tribe is named after their father Midian, uh, who is a a a a son of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, uh, the Sayyidina Ibrahim is said to have had four children. There is, uh, there is uh, Ismail and Ishaq, who are the two famous ones amongst them that receive prophethood. And then there's Madian and Madain. And so Madian, uh, his progeny becomes a, a qawm of people. And so Sayyidina, uh, uh, Ibrahim's uh, uh, progeny from there, from amongst them, uh, uh, Shu'ib becomes a prophet who warns his people because their people go astray. 
and their story is mentioned in the Quran and their their people go astray and they're warned and their destruction is after the destruction of the Qom of Lut alayhi uh, salam. In the in the in the in the Quran when it's the story of Shu'ayb alayhi salam's uh, da'wah and preaching to his people is mentioned he mentions that the people of Lut are not far from you their example isn't far away I mean you guys all know what happened to them that happened relatively recently uh, and so uh, Madian uh, they're also Arabic speaking people um, they take the way of the Arabs and they live uh, 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 in uh, the north uh, western part of the Arabian Peninsula uh, north of Hijaz um, north of Tabuk uh, and they speak Arabic and uh, so the, the, the Arab speaking prophets are Ibrahim who learns Arabic when he goes to Makkah Mukarrama, Sayyidina Ishaq who learns Arabic from the, from the Jurhum in Makkah Mukarrama, uh, Shu'aib alayhi salam, Hud and Salih who are prophets to the ancient people uh, and uh, from the Arab al-Ba'idah uh, and, uh, and then uh, after them uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Those are the Arabic speaking prophets. So what happens is that uh, Madian, uh, you know, their their uh, brother Shu'aib uh, receives the the wahi, the revelation of the Lord, and he tells them to straighten up and worship no one except for Allah, and not to cheat people in their transactions, and not to oppress the power, that the strong shouldn't oppress the weak, and uh, you know all of these other teachings, and they reject him, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala destroys them. And so he lives an abnormally long lifespan thereafter. He lives an abnormally long lifespan thereafter. And so it is uh, some matter of mild controversy amongst the Mufassirin. Is this, uh, is this old man the same prophet Shu'aib who's mentioned in the Quran and other places? Or is he a man whose name is Shu'aib uh, who is related to him? Or is he, uh, is he someone else? Uh, and the majority of the Mufassirin say, no, it's actually, it's actually the 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 same Shu'aib Akhu Madian, the 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 brother of the people of Madian that called them to the deen that that were then destroyed and Allah gave him a very long life afterward. Uh, and Abu Nah Shaykhun Kabir, our father, is a very old man. Would seem to corroborate that he's very old. So uh, um, what happens is he's he's a Nabi, and so he asked Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to tell him like what's your story what's your backstory and so he's like yes i know what this is you're <laughs> allah ta'ala has chosen you for something more important and uh and so uh what happens is in the course of this discussion that they are having um one of the daughters of uh of of of, of uh, sayyidina shu'aib alayhi salam says to him um that uh ya abat istajirhu inna khaira man istajarta al-qawiyu al-ameen that oh my dear father, you should hire him because the best person you can hire is the one who is both powerful, strong, and trustworthy. Meaning they're competent, they're good at what they do, and you can trust them. They're honest and upright. And so uh, uh, immediately, as a res res response to this uh, uh, vote of confidence from his father, he says, "Look, why don't you marry one of my two daughters, and uh, we'll make the contract that if you work for me for for uh, uh, um." seven years uh, or if you wish to you can make it 10 years he says that on that agreement we will uh, uh we will uh i'll marry you one of my daughters and uh uh sayyidina musa accepts accepts that 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 proposition so the two of them are the two of them are together um and uh, uh by the way uh shuaib his he's mentioned in the bible as well alayhi salam and uh, uh, uh the mufassirun write that his uh, uh, his his name uh, that he's mentioned in the Bible by is Yithru uh, or Yathru uh, 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 or Yathra and uh, sorry not Yathru Yathra Yathra Yathri um, and so uh, that that translates actually into the English name Jethro if you ever heard the name Jethro before um, Jethro is from Midian uh, if you uh, read about it in the Bible and so that's that's who Sayyidina Shraib is uh, is in in the uh, in the tradition of the of the Bible, and uh, the name of the wife of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, who is the daughter of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, Sayyidina Shuaib alayhi salam, her name is Safura, uh, 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 and here uh, Safar uh, uh, Safura I believe means uh, uh, 
having to do with uh, you know with being in li- with 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 being like possessed or filled with light musfira wujuhun yuma even musfira dahikata mustabshira um the same you have the same uh, uh, the same root in the quran uh, being used uh, meaning uh, filled with light and that's a i guess a philological phil- philological uh, or philological uh, uh, discussion that that we don't have time for right now because i think our time for today is up but uh, uh, that's a beautiful marriage uh, between the two of them and it starts in a beautiful way and it's a sh- proof that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you do what's right uh, Allah Ta'ala will give you what's best, what's better than you could have expected otherwise. Uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala uh, give us all tawfiq. Allah Ta'ala help the oppressed people in the world. Allah Ta'ala help the oppressors to stop their oppression so that they don't follow the same destructive pathway that uh, Fir'aun did and that he harmed himself and he harmed others and he paid the price and others paid the price in this world and in the hereafter all of the price will be uh, on his head. Uh, and not on the heads of those that he oppressed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify all of those fira'ina who are uh, in the world today and give them the guidance to uh, repent from their ways and leave their leave their, uh, leave their their oppression. And may Allah ta'ala give uh, the rest of the people also the guidance not to side with the oppressor ever and not to cast their lot in with the oppressor because the day of the justice of Allah ta'ala is coming. And uh, whether a person believes it or not or they acknowledge it or it's going to come and it's going to come up on everyone um and uh, uh 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 you know on that day in one of the two surahs we mentioned it's about sayyidam musa alayhi salam allah ta'ala says in surah taha shahat al-wujuh wa anat al-wujuh lil hayy al-qayyum wa qad khaba man hamala dhulma that uh, 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 that uh, that day uh, uh, the, the 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 faces will be uh, in severe need and in difficulty um, when they face the ever living and the one through whom everyone subsists, and they will be very disappointed. The people who who's, uh, who carries oppression, the burden and responsibility of oppression of 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 of, of transgression that day, uh, that person is going to uh, is going to be very disappointed in the outcome. And Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from ever being amongst them or aiding them in any way, shape, or form, and give us the honor of opposing them in whatever capacity He gave us, uh, uh, which is which is good and which is helpful and productive. Wa sallallahu tabarak wa taala wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.